Today we are going to be testing out Google Anti-Gravity. This is a new IDE from Google that just launched today. The first thing I want to just say is I actually completely hate the name because I think number one, it's a mouthful to say, anti-gravity. Americans and British say it differently. I guess Americans will say anti-gravity. It's just a very, it's just a rubbish name in my opinion. But let's see if the IDE actually lives up to the hype. So the first thing we're going to do before we download the IDE is let's just watch the intro video from Google. Every breakthrough in model intelligence for coding encourages us to rethink what developers- Isn't this the guy from Windsurf? <laughs> this is one of the snakes from Windsurf that left his team um, to, to join Google. It should look like. Gemini 3 is our latest such model advancement. So we went out to build the next step change of an IDE. Introducing Google Anti-Gravity, a new way of working. Oh, you said anti-gravity. So do Americans say anti-gravity? I thought they say anti-gravity. <sighs> Confused. Next era of agentic intelligence. It is the ideal agentic development home base. Does it have an IDE? Yes, but also has a whole lot more. He's very good at presenting actually. He's not as nerdy as the open AI presenters that can barely get a word out. We started with the core IDE and added pieces that evolved. Why would they use light mode to show this? I really don't understand these teams. Like what, what developer uses light mode? That's just the weirdest thing to use to show off your new product. IDE towards an agent first feature, such as browser use, asynchronous Ooh, interaction agent. patterns, and an additional novel agent first product form factor, helping you experience lift up. <laughs> Your new focus? <laughs> Let me just watch that again. Helping you experience lift up. I mean, that was a pretty smooth effect. What would be cool is if after this video, they say we edited this video with Gemini 3. Your new focus is architecting the solution, not implementing every single step. So congratulations. You have been elevated to a manager of agents. Instead of an agent living in your tools, your tools are now instruments for many agents. Okay. The agent begins to work autonomously by creating an implementation plan and activating multiple surfaces to complete your request. Our agent is more capable of tackling complex tasks and even doing so in parallel, letting you ship more than ever before. You can verify your code quality at a glance, then ship with absolute confidence. The agent can automatically take... Let's just see this. <clears throat> I guess this is it's pretty much, looks like windsurf to me. Very, very similar design. Other screenshots of bug fixes, or even screen recordings of feature implementations, proving the Ooh, work was cool. done and tested. By providing these instant, verifiable artifacts, you can confidently trust and merge the code without hours of manual review. Anti-gravity eliminates the pain of trying to polish near-perfect results by easily guiding the agent's 90% solution all the way to 100%. Now let's say the agent produces a landing page mockup with Nano Banana, and you now want to make some UI adjustments. Oh. You can give visual comments, just like a designer. Wait, just to understand, they and said build a landing page for a flight tracker, and it generated an image first, and I'm guessing it's going to allow you to um, confirm if this is what you want before it actually builds it. I want to make some UI adjustments. You can give visual comments, just like a designer, letting you leave that feedback cool. exactly where the problem is. That is cool. And you can also leave- Because the problem right now with cursor is the moment you ask it to build something, it just kind of starts implementing it with code, which is annoying because you might just end up spending a few minutes um, waiting for the results only to basically not really like it at the end of the day. Comments on code diffs or feedback on screen recordings of browser use. <clears throat> but I'm still skeptical because all these AI demos, it always works perfectly fine until it's your um, time to actually use it and it, doesn't work at all and it just turns out it was just all hype. So I'm skeptical until I try it out myself in a few seconds. It's a brand new way of collaborating with agents and you're gonna love it. Say goodbye to what held you down before. Welcome to Google Anti-Gravity. <laughs> okay, let's just look at the pricing before downloading it. As expected, it's literally zero dollars a month. That is insane. Google is just undercutting every single person on the market. And if it turns out this is actually better than Cursor, then I guess Cursor is going to lose a lot of customers today. So let's just download it. So they have Mac and Windows and Linux. Let's get the Apple Silicon. Okay. Cool. 
Welcome to Anti-Gravity, let's get you set up. This is cool, I really like when they allow you to import um, from your existing IDE. Let's import, mm, let's just start fresh. We're gonna use dark mode, obviously, because we're not as weird as the editors of that video. How do you want to use anti-gravity, anti agent-driven development, agent-assisted development? It's so funny that this is recommended, but in the video, they make it seem like this is exactly what it's gonna, you're gonna get. But at the end of the day, they're still basically saying that you're gonna do most of the code and then the agent is gonna assist you with it. So pretty funny. Tell me the execution policy, auto review the set, okay. Key bindings. Okay, let me just sign into Google. So far, so good. Okay. My account is being set up. I'm so excited. <laughs> okay, we're in. My first thoughts are, this looks okay. I mean, it just looks like, I mean, they're all VS Code forks, right? At the end of the day. I'm gonna create an Expo app and I'm gonna to try to clone my workout app with it. So to create an Expo app, I usually use Command I to get the instructions here because I forget what the instructions are for creating an Expo app. So I'll say create Expo app. This is using Gemini Flash. Perfect. Okay, that was cool. I actually gave it the name. Okay, that's good. I like that that works because I think in Windsurf, that command never actually worked for me to actually um, use AI in the terminal. But I'm not sure if I wasn't implementing it properly. But this is good so far, except this onboarding is still going on. How long is that gonna take? It's annoying because you can actually see the progress of it. Okay, it's done. Now I'm just gonna open that folder. Let me just look at this right here. It looks like they only have, oh, they have Claude here, which is pretty good. GPT also, they basically have one of the worst versions of GPT here, which is actually really funny. <laughs> Planning, agent can plan before executing tasks. Agent will execute tasks directly. We want planning. What else do they have here? Mentions, workflow. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find my workout app, which is the strong app. I am going to get the app store link for that. And let's just see, because apparently this can do web browsing, right? So I'm just gonna say, clone this workout app. I have already scaffold um, React Native Expo you. That should be good. I'm just going to pop that in there. Okay. Oh, this is cool. So it created a implementation plan file. Proposed changes. I do like this file actually because you can see like a very detailed plan of what it's about to implement as opposed to when it just gives you a summary, which is what Cursor does right now. Um, it wants to run a command deleting one of the tabs. Let's just delete that. This is also really fast. I actually tried Gemini 3 earlier on cursor and it was not this fast. It might have something to do with this high right here. Maybe they, they're given priority access to people that are using anti-gravity. Let's just give that a second and see what we get. Logitech mouse is not working apparently. This is something common that happens to Logitech mouse. I've been using them for what? this one for a year and the right click basically just stopped working today. So annoying. I have to keep blowing on it to make it work. <laughs> Looks like it's done. So it creates this walkthrough file when it's completed, which is very different from cursor. And the walkthrough file shows me what features has been implemented manual testing scenario, I guess how to like verify it and then what to do next. Okay, let's just look at all the files it created. Uh, do I have to accept it? I don't even know where the accept button is or did I just accept it? Isn't there an accept all? Oh, there we go, accept all. This is pretty confusing, but that works. Okay, let's try to run this file. Oh shit, my, my shortcuts are not working here. Oh no, because I didn't import the shortcuts. 
Okay, we're gonna open this, go to package.json, we run it with Yarn iOS. Either my mind is gonna be blown right now or I'm about to be very disappointed. Okay, it's opening the simulator. Let's just open that in full screen here. Okay, oh my God, fingers crossed. Okay, let me just show you what the app, look, app looks like so we can compare it. So this is what the app looks like. You can essentially start a workout and select what workouts, what exercises you want to do. And then you can basically log the rep and wait for each exercise. And this is the rough UI of it. There's also a rest timer and so on. So let's see how much of this app it implemented. This looks good. This actually looks very similar to the app. This is like pretty close so far. Apart from this, I don't know what's going on up here, but let's start an empty workout. Let's add an exercise. I didn't get to choose what exercise to add though, but this UI is not bad, so I can enter that, how many reps I've done with it. This timer right here is very, very similar to the current, um, to my workout app. Hmm. But where is my rest timer? There is no rest timer. And when I add an exercise, it's just add in the same exercise. Okay. <laughs> what am I meant to do with this? It's just adding the same exercise. I, I mean, this is not gonna be that hard to prompt and fix, but it's not bad and it logs the exercise. Oh, sorry, it logs the workout, which is very similar to the workout log in the app. Like, it's not bad to be fair. And it was very, very quick considering this search is completely messed up. It's not using a safe area. I think it just gave up on the measure page. Yeah, it's not bad. I think this is a pretty horrible bug that is just not allowing me to select uh, um, the workout I want to do, but not bad, not bad. Let's see if there's anything else we can find in anti-gravity. What else can it do? So it has MCP servers. Oh, and it has a nice list of MCP servers that I can just download right away. That's cool, because I remember trying to set this up in Windsurf and Cursor, and I basically had to create my own config file. I don't know if they've changed that yet, but this is not bad. You have rules, very similar. Like this is literally Cursor, except it's free, which is pretty impressive. And you have Claude and you have Gemini. GPT is not here, but I don't know who really calls with GPT. I don't. If you guys do, let me know in the comment section. Uh, there is a browser. I don't know what this is. Bring the anti-gravity agent into your browser to see and interact with website. Empowers agent to test features. Okay, this is cool. So it has a browser where you can essentially give it access to what it's built so it can look at the logs and so on. But I have to download the Chrome extension for that. I'll make another video for this um, later this week. But first look. It doesn't look bad, it works as expected. There was no bugs, the UI is pretty nice. I think it looks better than Windsurf. Um, I still prefer Cursor maybe because I use it all the time, but this is free. I mean, this is literally free. So <laughs> I feel like that on its own makes this the winner basically. I'm gonna be making more videos on Gemini 3. If you enjoyed this video and you want to get more simple to understand tech videos, subscribe to my channel for more.